Hey, Cub fans. Welcome back to Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. And we have issues. We have closure issues. I'm pretty convinced of that at this point. Some other issues, but right now we have closure issues. Um, Edbert Alzali just uh, blew another save opportunity, giving up a two-run home run in the top of the ninth inning. We lose to the Marlins 3-2. to two. That drops us to 12-8. and eight. Um, very disappointing. It, it was kind of a it was kind of a rough day offensively too, but a lot of ups and downs. We had uh, several innings where the Marlins threatened and we got out of it. So we were kind of dodging bullets all throughout the game until finally the last one in the ninth hit us. So I don't know. I well, I guess we just need to uh, talk about the game, kind of give give get a, a, an overview of it. So. Um, let's just go ahead and start. Nico uh, led off at second base. Uh, the Mar Marlins had this really Lazardo, this lefty was really good. So we had our left-handed um, opposing lineup in. Wisdom was in right field again, hitting second. Christopher Morrell uh, slumping. Christopher Morrell was uh, DH hitting third. Uh, Dansby was at shortstop hitting cleanup. Coop was at first base hitting fifth. Talkman was in center field hitting six. Uh, Nicky Barrels was at third base hitting seven. Uh, Miguel Amaya catching in the eight spot. And Alexander Canario got a start in left field today. And it was quite the adventure for Alexander Canario in left field today. So we scored two, got the, the two runs in the third inning. I'll talk about that. Uh, Canario uh, started it off with a flare single to right field, his only hit for the day. Uh, Nico came up, singled up the middle, and then Patrick Wisdom just uh, hit a triple off the right center field wall, uh, scoring Canario and uh, Nico. So that was the scoring. That was the extent of it. Uh, the two runs, and we just never could get anything going offensively. We ended up with just seven hits total. We walked three times, struck out 11. We left eight on base. Again, no home runs. Uh, one for seven with runners in scoring position. And it was kind of a close 46 degrees at Wrigley today, 13 mile per hour wind blowing from left to right. And it came into play, uh, I think, a little bit. So let's go ahead and talk about what uh, the lineup did. Nico went two for five, uh, had, a, had a pretty good day offensively, had a single in the third, single in the seventh with a run scored, uh, but he made the last out with runners on uh, second and third, grounding out unassisted uh, to, the, to the first baseman. Uh, Wizzy went one for four. He had that uh, two RBI triple in the third inning and uh, he hit it off the wall. That, that was, it was a wind aid a little bit. Wind blowing from left to right, so I think he got it up in that breeze a little bit, and it carried on out uh, to right center field going off the wall. And then in the uh, seventh inning, he flies out to dead center field, and uh, center field goes back to almost to the to the wall, well on the warning track. So Wizzy looks like he's he's going to start hitting some home runs. Uh, he, he had a couple long balls today that just didn't quite make it out. <sighs> Christopher Morrell, 0 for 3. Um I don't know. It's not good. I, I don't know. I I think just today it just struck me. It's like, uh, this is starting to be serious. Um, he was off to a good start. And over here, the last, I don't know what it's up to, uh, how many at-bats it is, but he is in a, a big-time slump. And he didn't really look good today. It looked like it's in his head. So his average is down to that even 200. So he goes another bat without a hit and he's under the 200 mark so Christopher Morrell really struggling and it's hurting us too Dansby went 0 for 3 today uh, Cooper went 0 for 3 had a walk Talkman went 1 for 4 Talk had that uh, had a single in the ninth inning leading off to at least give us a chance nice little opposite field uh, hard hit ground ball uh, Nick went 1 for 4 uh, he singled a little fisted um, line drive up the middle in the ninth. Uh, Miguel Amaya went one for three, a uh, couple of strikeouts, sack fly, no, a sack bunt in the ninth. And Alexander Canario went one for four. He struck out in the ninth with um, runners on second and third and one out. So it was kind of kind of a rough go. 
Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where we were. And then I'll talk about the ninth inning, and then we'll backtrack, talk about how we got there uh, from the pitcher's perspective. But we go in the ninth inning, down three to two. Talk leads off with that single that I talked about to left field, and then Nicky with two strikes singles up the middle. So we got first and second, no outs, down one in the ninth. Miguel Amaya lays down a nice sacrifice bunt, moves Talk to third and Nicky up to second base. So we got second and third, one out, and uh, Canario strikes out swinging, and then uh, Nico grounds out to first base unassisted to strand the two runners, tying run and winning run on third and second, respectively. A little, little crushing. So, but let's let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about some of the the good news. Javier Assad looked really good today, and I got some things I want to talk about with, with Javier. First of all, his ERA is now at two eleven, and he he's 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 very interesting. He got really interesting uh, to me today, uh, and the reason for that is I'm trying to figure out he's two two point one one ERA. Uh, why is that? What What is he doing well? And the guys talked about it a little bit, but uh, first off, he has an array of pitches, two-seamer, four-seamer, sinker, cutter, change, curve. And I don't know which is his best pitch, right? He's got – they're all good. They're, none of them are like, you know, like lights out, like you're going to go, oh, you got to see this guy throw this pitch. But they're all, I would say, at least average or better. So he's got a four, five, six pitch lineup that they're all really good pitches. And when he's commanding them like he did in the middle part of his start today, he's just really hard to handle. You don't know what to look for. That two seamer that he had today threw that really well. That uh, you know front hip to a lefty that comes back and nips that inside corner. He had that working, and uh, ju- just really a-, a good pitcher. I like it. I like because he's a piece of pitcher. He's not just uh, trying to throw the ball harder than you can can hit one. Um, he it's movement, it's location, just very fun to watch. So he starts out had a little bit of a rough first inning. First inning he goes a double and a walk. So he's got first and second, uh, nobody out, and um, he works out. If he gets a couple of uh, a pop up and a ground out, and then with uh, two outs. Uh, this lefty hits this line drive toward Canario. And I mentioned earlier that Canario had a little bit of an adventure in left field. He made playing left field in Wrigley on a windy day look as hard as I think it probably is. So in the first inning it started, guy hits a, a lefty, hits a, a line drive, and Canario misreads it both for distance and depth. So he's going to the alley in left center, and he overruns it. So he's got to reach back behind him to catch it. But he's also too shallow. So the ball is over his head. So he uh, overran it in terms of its um, its position. So he has to reach back behind him. And it was also over his head. I don't know that I've ever seen anything like it. He ends up catching the ball. I don't know how he did it. But that saved two runs, that Canario catch in the first inning. Uh, that would have gone to the wall easily. Two runs would have scored. So he dodged a bullet there. After that, Javi settled in. He goes one, two, three in the second, uh, one, two, three in the third, 13 pitches uh, in each of those innings. So he was cruising. He then retired, I think it was nine in a row. Uh, so it's all good. He looked, he looked like he was cruising. And then fifth inning, he goes walk, walk, strike out, single, and then gives up a, a sacrifice fly to score the run. So that's how the Marlins got their run in the fifth inning. Uh, Assad with back-to-back walks, a strikeout, then a single, and a sack fly. But Council goes ahead and pulls him. He had thrown 87 pitches at that at that time, and the Marlins had a lefty coming in. So Council went to get uh, Luke Little, and I'll talk about Luke in a second. So Javier, Javier Assad went four two-thirds inning, gives up three hits, three walks, three Ks in the one run, 87 pitches, 51 strikes, um, 2.11 ERA. It's getting to the point where I am really feel like I can count on Javier Assad to come out and give us a quality start, and he certainly did that, uh, did that today. So 
We got the lefty coming up. So Council pulls Luke with um, in the fifth inning, first and third with two outs. And we sent Luke down after that, uh, that recent outing where he just lost his stuff. Because of the double header, we got to add a 27th player to the roster. So Luke was the 27th player that was brought up for the, the double header. So Luke is in the bullpen. He comes in in the fifth inning, first and third, two outs, and just blows his lefty away. Three pitches. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good night. 96 miles per hour in the last one. Didn't have a chance. Then Luke came in, pitched uh, the sixth inning, walked the, the leadoff guy, and then turns a really nice 1-6-3 double play. One-hop comebacker that sort of found Luke's glove. Uh, he sort of squared himself, got his feet set, threw a strike to Dansby, and Dansby turns the double play. So Luke gets uh, two quick outs in the sixth, and uh, Council comes and gets him to put in Yancey Almonte. So Luke's appearance after that uh, abysmal outing he had prior to being sent down, he goes one inning, gives up uh, one hit, uh, walked one with a strikeout. So Yancey comes in with two outs and a runner on second in the sixth. He hits the first guy, his fastball, with that big run on it, got in and hit him. So um, he hits the first guy, but then gets induces a four to three ground out uh, to get out of it. Yancey comes back, uh, pitches the seventh inning, goes one, two, three, fly out to right, ground out to Nico and a swinging strike. So Yancey ended up looking pretty good today. He goes an inning and a third, uh, 1K through 17 pitches, 10 strikes. So he's a little polarizing. He can he can get he can lose it, but if he's anywhere close. Uh, he's hard to hit, and he gets a lot of uh, swing and miss out of the zone, which I, I like that too. So, uh, Yancey, I mean, I, if he can if he can find it, uh, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with him uh, sort of mid-late inning now. Uh, Mark Leiter Jr. comes in to pitch the eighth, and Mark goes fly out to left field, strike out, and then gives up a couple of base hits in a row. We're in hit hard. So, Adbert comes in with two outs. Uh, two runners on in the eighth inning. Uh, he walks the the first guy he faces, so now we got bases loaded, uh, and we get out of it with a fly out to left field. So uh, Marlins threatened in the first. They threatened. Uh, they scored in the fifth. They threatened in the sixth. They threatened in the eighth. And I was thinking going into the night, maybe that that was it. They were, you know, we we dodged so many bullets. They had so many opportunities that they let go by. Uh, I was sort of optimistic that we were going to get out of the ninth. Well, ninth inning, uh, Adbert goes uh, 5-3, ground out. Uh, Madrigal made a really nice play. Uh, and then Adbert gives up a single and a home run. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. The problem I have with it, it was to the two guys that you know we're not supposed to let beat us. Uh, Arise singles and then that De La Cruz. I, it, those are the two guys that are going to beat you, and they did. We just let we let the two guys that you would say, okay, if if playing the Marlins, don't let those two guys beat you, and you'll be okay. And that's who beat us in the ninth inning. That's the problem I'm having with it. Um, so it gives up the two runs and uh, blows the save, blows the win, gets the loss, and this is becoming this is becoming a problem. I know we've been talking about it a little bit over the last few days about, you know, it's we, we have to have a closer. We have to have a, a closer that comes in and locks it down. That, we're not we're not going to be a, a championship team. We're not going to win the division without a lockdown closer. It's just not going to happen. And as of right now, I don't think we have one. Uh, Naris hasn't pitched in a long time either. I don't know if there's something up with that. But uh, – we got an issue. Good news is Shota's going later tonight, and um, I'm loving the doubleheader Saturday. I, uh, we should have doubleheaders on Saturday all the time. Ernie was right. Let's play two. That's great. So another piece of news is Ian Happ. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but he came out of the game yesterday in the seventh inning, hamstring tightness. And he was out of the game today, and we'll have to see if he's in the lineup tonight. But – uh, I'm starting to think Ian Happ's got hamstring issues again. He missed time in spring training, and he's had some hamstring issues. And they, you know, they're 
they are they can be a problem. So it's going to be interesting to see if Happer is is back um, for the in the lineup tonight. But guys, we've we dropped one we shouldn't have dropped. Um, we we have to win. Hopefully, Shota will be on tonight, and we can put some runs on the board. And um, and then tomorrow we'll have Kyle going. So tonight's must win. We're back to a must. Can you believe it? This is a must win game tonight against the Marlins. That's where we are. So. Because in my mind, I was like, well, we get the first three, and then, you know, if Kyle does what Kyle's been doing, we can afford to take that loss, if, if you can afford a loss. I think they're willing to give up a loss, seems like. Um, that's kind of how I feel about it. You put Kyle on the mound on Sunday, I feel like, well, we're saying it's okay if we lose. That, that's what I would predict is going to happen. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they know what we don't. I, I know we're all wondering what, what they're doing with it. But um, – Tonight's tonight's game, it's must win. Shota has to step up. We gotta score him some runs and take care of it and then figure out how to way figure out a way to win tomorrow. So that's the news. Uh Marlins three, Cubs two. We'll uh, try to take the the nightcap here in a few hours. So thanks for joining us here on Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. Hope I have better news for you later on tonight. Go Cubs go.